Hi and welcome to Talk It, Do It, the tech channel where we explore real-world use cases that are a bit more than hello world. Welcome to the first video in our Platform Engineering Toolkit series. Today we're diving into something really exciting, building an MCP server that lets AI assistants like Claude directly interact with Kubernetes clusters. By the end of this series, you'll have access to a complete suite of MCP servers, full source code, and detailed documentation to revolutionize your platform engineering workflows. The Model Context Protocol, or MCP, has the potential to be a game changer. It's a standardized way for AI models to interact with various tools and data sources. Think of it as a universal translator between AI assistants and your infrastructure tools. Today's Kubernetes implementation is just the beginning. We'll be creating MCP servers for CI-CD pipelines, security tools, and much more throughout this series. For this demo, I will use Claude as the MCP client. Let me show you this in action. First, we'll list all namespaces and check our connection is working. This should be a familiar site to those who use Claude. This is the desktop version where we have configured and added our MCP server code. We can see our namespaces on our cluster. Now let's ask to list all running pods in the backstage namespace. Again, we use the chat client that will use our MCP server to connect and talk directly to our Kubernetes cluster. And there you go again, we can see all running pods in the backstage namespace. Do you want to get the description of the backstage namespace? No problem, let's just ask for it. Here goes the request. And we can see the response. And there you go, looking really good. Now we can ask Claude to list all deployments, but this time in multiple namespaces. We are asking for deployments in both the Backstage and Kubernetes dashboard namespaces. And now we can see the results and Claude is displaying the results for us, as we would expect. Let's find out the version of Kubernetes we are running. Off it goes again, querying our Kubernetes cluster to find the version of both the cluster and the Kubernetes command line tool. This time, we are going to ask for a list of our cluster nodes. We are using Minikube here, but this could be a cluster from Azure, Amazon, Google, Kind, or any other Kubernetes cluster, so long as you have a context connected. Wouldn't it be great if we could read the logs from pods as well? Think how good this would be to standardize a single chat interface for talking to your pods logs. Our MCP server and client is working on getting the log information from the pods in the backstage namespace. And this is displaying a good summary of the logs. We could extend this to use any format and also to trigger an event or other MCP servers. We will now test that we can also create something on our cluster. We are going to request a deployment and a service be created to run a simple engine X container. We have also asked for it to create a new namespace for this as well. And it has successfully created all that we asked and is showing us a summary with added details. Let's just check the namespaces again to make sure our new namespace was created. A familiar request. And here we are listing the namespaces again and look, we can see the namespace we requested was indeed created. This is impressive so far, but we need to check that the deployment and service was actually created and running. We can ask for a port forward to be started so we can then confirm we can browse to the Nginx page. Our dutiful client and server is handling this request for us and is now showing the port forward has started. Let's now go confirm we can indeed browse to the page on localhost. This is a quick test and for production ready MCP servers, we would have this route using certificates and a gateway. There you go, we can browse. This is so, so good. Great potential. Let's now also test we can delete from the cluster. Here we shall delete the namespace we just created which should delete all the resources that are in the namespace as well. It is worth noting that we can only do what our permissions on the cluster allow us to do, as it is using our current Kubernetes context. So if you have an issue with creating, reading or deleting, you need to make sure you have the right permissions on your cluster. We will check again that the namespace was deleted as requested. Let's ask chat to again list all namespaces and the namespace was successfully deleted Good work. Let's say thanks and move on from using the chat client to the next section of this quick demo. Now it's time for us to go look at the MCP code that we have created that enabled us to talk to our Kubernetes cluster through a chat client like Claude. 
In Claude Desktop, we add our MCP configuration to the Claude Desktop config.json file. This will change when I publish the MCP server. For now, it is using a local path. I wanted to quickly show you some of the documentation I am putting together that I will publish once I have the MCP server completed and also the other MCP servers that will make up the platform engineering toolkit. For now, we can briefly see how to clone, run, and configure this MCP. But again, this will be fully updated with complete instructions once the toolkit is ready. If you want any specific features, please add a comment to this video and I shall review it and add to my to-do list. We are using the Python SDK and UV. Here is a quick look at the TOML file. You can see dependencies and setup tools and exclusions we are using. Let's take a closer look at our Kubernetes client.py code. It's the bridge between our MCP server and your Kubernetes cluster. The star of the show is our Kubernetes client class, which handles all the heavy lifting. It's got smart methods that execute commands while handling contexts and errors gracefully and get pod logs for retrieving container logs. Let's peek under the hood at our core Python files. First, there's MCP server pi, the heart of our system. The Kubernetes MCP server class here acts as our translator between Claude and Kubernetes, registering cluster resources as tools that Claude can understand and use while maintaining clean JSON RPC communication. Prompts.py is our secret source. It contains carefully crafted prompt templates that help Claude understand how to interact with Kubernetes resources. These prompts guide Claude in everything from listing pods to troubleshooting cluster issues. Finally, main.py ties everything together. It handles CLI commands, sets up our server configuration, and manages the MCP transport layer. It's also where we implement our smart logging setup that keeps communication clean and error free. Next in this series, we will add more MCP servers as part of the toolkit, and this will include GitHub, Jira, Postgres databases, Lambda functions, and many more. So please click the notification bell to be notified when the next video is released. And once I have completed this MCP server and have the code published, I shall update the links in the description. So do keep an eye out for this. And I just wanted to show that there are some great community MCP servers available already. An inspiration for this particular video came from looking at one of the community MCP servers for Kubernetes. Worth checking it out. As always, thank you so much for your time, and I hope you found this useful. I would appreciate any feedback on this video or other videos you would like me to make, and I will certainly consider it. Have a wonderful day, and hopefully see you on the next video.